Arjumand Manu Begum, popularly known as Mamtaz Mahal, meaning beloved ornament of the palace, was an empress of India during the Mughal dynasty. Her father was the brother of Empress Noor Jahan, betrothed to Prince Khurram in 1607 AD at the age of 14 years. She was married five years later on 10th May 1612. A date selected by the court astrologers as most conducive to ensuring a happy marriage to Prince Khurra, who later ascended the peacock throne of India as the fifth Mughal emperor and popularly known as Shah Jahan. First, she was his third wife and became his favorite. After their wedding celebration, Khurram finding her in appearance and character elect among all the women of the time, gave her the title Mumtaz Mahal. Begum. He was the fifth Mughal ruler after Babur, Humayu, Akbar, and Jahangir. The land revenue of the Mughal Empire under Shah Jahan was 20.75 million sterling. Cock throne with its trail blazing in the shifting natural colors of rubies, sapphires, and emeralds was valued by the jeweler Tavernier at 6.50 million sterling. Mumtaz Mahal had a very deep and loving marriage with Shah Jahan. Mumtaz Mahal was Shah Jahan's trusted companion, traveling with him all over the Mughal Empire. His trust in her was so great that he even gave her his imperial seal, the Mohar Uzaha. Mamtaz was portrayed as a perfect wife with no aspiration to political power. She also enjoyed watching elephant and combat fights performed for the court. It was quite common for women of noble birth to commission architecture in the Mughal Empire. Mumtaz devoted some time to Riverside Garden in Agra and it may have been her affection for this garden that prompted the eventual form of her monument. Despite her frequent pregnancies, Mumtaz travelled with Shah Jahan's entourage. She died in Buranpur, 1631 AD, in the Deccan, now in Madhya Pradesh, during the birth of their 13th child, a daughter named Guhara Begum. Her body was temporarily buried at Buranpur in a vault pleasure garden known as Zainabad, originally constructed by Shah Jahan's uncle Daniel on the bank of the Tapti River. Her original grave still lies here. Uranpur was never intended by her husband as his wife's final resting spot. As a result, her body was disinterred in December 1631 and transported in a golden casket. Shah Jahan stayed behind in Burhanpur to conclude the military campaign that had originally brought him to the region. While there, he began planning the design and the construction of a suitable mausoleum and funerary garden in Agra for his wife, a task that would take more than 22 years to complete the Taj Mahal. Today, the Taj Mahal stands as the ultimate monument to love and homage to her beauty and life. The contemporary court chroniclers paid an unusual amount of attention to Mumtaj Mahal's death and Shah Jahan's grief at her demise. In the immediate aftermath of his bereavement, the emperor was reportedly inconsolable. Apparently, after her death, Shah Jahan went into secluded mourning for a year. For when he appeared again, his hair had turned white, his back was bent, and his face worn. Since Mumtaz had died on Wednesday, all entertainments were banned on that day. Shah Jahan gave up listening to music, wearing jewelry or rich and colorful clothes, and using perfumes for two years. Shah Jahan's eldest daughter, the devoted Jahanara Begum, gradually brought him out of the grief and took the place of Mumtaz at court. Immediately after the burial in Bharanpur, Shah Jahan and Imperial Court devoted themselves to the planning and design of the mausoleum and funerary garden in Agra now known as Taj Mahal, or fondly the Taj creation. The Taj Mahal is actually an integrated complex of structures with the white domed marble, mausoleum, 
being its most significant component. Board of Architects by the Emperor Shah Jahan, the construction of the Taj complex began about 1631 AD. The principal mausoleum was completed in 1648 AD by employing thousands of artisans and craftsmen, whereas in the outlying buildings and the gardens were finished five years later in 1653 AD. The Taj, the ultimate expression of love, speaks volumes of indulgence coming from an overflowing treasury and political security of that era, and much more by way of the finesse in art and science of architecture. Herring bone inlays define the space between many of the adjoining elements. White inlays are used in sandstone buildings and the dark or black inlays on the white marbles. Mortared areas of the marble buildings have been stained or painted in a contrasting color, creating geometric patterns of considerable complexity. Flows and walkways use contrasting tiles or blocks in desolation patterns. The inlay stones are of yellow marble, jasper, and jade, polished and leveled to the surface of the walls. Architects and Craftsmen The exquisite and highly skilled inlay work was developed by Mughal lapidarists from techniques taught to them by Italian craftsmen employed at court. The look of European herbals, book illustrating botanical species, was adapted and refined in Mughal inlay work. History obscures precisely who designed the Taj Mahal. In the world at that time, the credit for a building design was usually given to its patron rather than its architects. From the evidence of contemporary sources, it is clear that a team of architects were responsible for the design and supervision of the works, but they are mentioned infrequently. A labor force of about 20,000 workers was recruited from across the northern India. Calligraphers from Syria and Persia, inlayers from southern India, stone cutters from Baluchistan, a specialist in building turrets another who carved only marble flowers, were part of the 37 men who formed the creative unit. Some of the builders involved in construction of Taj Mahal under the master supervision of the Emperor Shah Jahan himself are Ismail Afandi, also known as Ismail Khan, of the Ottoman Empire designer of the main dome, Ustad Isa and Isa Muhammad Efendi of Persia, credited with a key role in architectural design. Puru from Persia, mentioned as a supervising architect. Kazim Khan, a native of Lahore, cast a solid gold finial. Chiranji Lal Alap Alapidari from Delhi, the chief sculptor and mosaicist. Amanat Khan from Shiraz, Iran, the chief Calligrapher of Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is an ambassador of Shah Jahan's strong interest in building and artistic innovations. The new architectural style includes much of the subsequent Indian architecture. Symmetry along two sides of a central axis, new columnar style, curvilinear forms and symbolic decorations based on naturalistic plant motifs are all characteristic of the Shah Jahan style that can be found in the Taj Mahal complex. The mausoleum is entirely clad in white marble, alluding to the stone's luminosity. The Mughal poets compared it to early dawn or to a cloud. Kalim wrote, it is a heaven of the color of dawn's bright face, because from top to bottom and inside out it is of marble, nay, not marble, because of its translucent color, the eye can mistake it for a cloud. Concept Under the reign of Shah Jahan, the symbolic content of Mughal architecture reached its peak. The marble platform of the mausoleum, Takatga monumental platforms housing the tomb chamber above the actual burial, had been a prominent feature of Mughal mausoleums. 
The platform, its square, and its corner are accentuated by the four minarets, which project as five sides of an octagon. It is set off from paved surface of the terrace by paving with an interlocking pattern of the white marble octagons into which are set four pointed sandstone stars surrounded by a border with alternating long and short cartridges a lobed variant of the angular pattern that frames the garden walkways in the center of the southern side of the platform towards the garden arc two flights of stairs partly covered by tunnel walls which provide the only access from the terrace up to the level of the mausoleum in the center of the other three sides tripartite bait in the form of an open oblong room flanked by two square cells all covered with coved ceilings is set into the platform the central room has three arched openings corresponding to the trefoil headed blind arches filled with jollies in the hexagonal pattern found everywhere in the complex a small rectangular window is cut into the central jolly these cell reach through doors are used for storage these rooms probably originally served visiting members of the imperial family as a place to retire and rest the pistaks or monumental porches are superimposed arched doors larger below and smaller above both doors are filled with a rectangular framework containing jollies formed of tiny hexagonal elements in a honeycomb pattern. The setting of the door on the ground floor echoes that of the outer pistach arch. It is framed with an inscription band and the door of the upper floor is integrated into the transition zone of the half vault formed of arches. Ground layout of the Taj Mahal complex. The main north-south axis runs through the Garden Canal and the Bazaar Street. On it are set the dominant features: the mausoleum, the pool, the Great Gate, the Jalau Khana, the Southern Gate of Jalau Khana, and the Chowk, which is square of the Bazaar, and the Caravansarai complex. The mosque establishes the form that Mihman Khana follows. It is based on a standard type which the Mughals took over from the Sultanate architecture of Delhi, namely that of an oblong massive prayer hall formed of vaulted base or room arranged in a row with a dominant central pistach and domes. The plinth the mausoleum sits on a plinth decorated with delicate relief carvings of plant elements. This type of ornament conforming to the principles of sensuous attentions to the details and selective naturalism. It is reserved for the lowest zone of the building, where it could be immediately appreciated by the viewer. Naturalistic ornament also appears above the plinth. In the spectacular flowering plants of the dados of the Pishtak halls. The dome, the marble dome that surmounts the tomb, is the most spectacular feature, is accentuated as it sits on a cylindrical drum, which is roughly 23 feet high. Because of its shape, the dome is often called an onion dome. The top is decorated with a lotus design, which also serves to accentuate its height. The shape of the dome is emphasized by four smaller dome chhatris or kiosks placed at its corners, which replicate the onion shape of the main dome. Their columned base open through the roof of the dome and provide light to the interior. Tall decorative spires extend from the edges of base walls and provide visual emphasis on the height to the height of the dome. The lotus motifs is repeated on both the chhatris and guldastas. The dome and chhatris are topped by a glided finial. The minarets or minar, four minarets 
each more than 130 feet tall display the designer's penchant for symmetry is set at the corners of the platform of the mausoleum and complete the architectural composition. They were designed as working minarets, a traditional element of mosques. Each minaret is effectively divided into three equal parts by two working balconies that ring the tower. At the top of the tower is a final balcony surmounted by a chhatri that mirrors the design of those on the tomb. The chhatris all share the same decorative elements of a lotus design topped by a gilded finial. The staircase opens through rectangular doors onto the balconies and windows providing light and ventilation. The minarets create a special aura around the mausoleum. The minarets were constructed slightly outside the plinth so that in the event of collapse, a typical occurrence with many tall construction of that period, the material from the towers would tend to fall away from the tomb. The Riverfront Terrace or Chabutra. The terrace of the Taj Mahal is the most ambitious ever built in a Mughal riverfront garden scheme, unprecedented in size and decoration, and one of the most impressive platforms in the history of architecture. Its full splendor is displayed towards the river, where it forms an uninterrupted red sandstone band 28 feet 6 inches high from the lowest visible plinth and 984 feet long with elaborate decoration in relief and inlay work. The riverfront terrace was the first part of the Taj Mahal complex to be built. All the areas are differentiated by their paving in varying geometrical patterns of dark and light sandstone. Mehman Khana or the Assembly Hall The Mehman Khana was created as a triplica solely to balance a group. To provide a jawab, an answer, for the mosque balances the bilateral symmetry of the composition. Its original function was to accommodate visitors for observing the death anniversaries of the Mumtaz. The Jilau Khana or Four Court Zone, the Taj complex is now entered through one of three gates leading into Jilau Khana or Four Court. The east and the west gates are those commonly used by tourists. The arcaded ranges along the south side of the Jalau Khana and the Bazaar Street leading to it were restored between 1905 AD and 1922 AD. The approach road to the west gate is flanked by two somewhat interbuildings, the Fatehpuri Masjid and an anonymous tomb, which is probably that of Sati Unnisa Khanum, the chief lady in waiting of Mumtaz Mahal. The two bazaar streets lead into the great ceremonial forecourt referred to as Jalau Khana, literally in front of the house. An inevident element of the Shah Jahan architecture for court etiquette and proper ceremonial behavior had become increasingly important and required an adequate architectural framing. Here, visitors to the tomb would get down from their elephants and horses and assemble in style before entering through the great gate. The Jalau Khana is flanked by two pairs of courtyard enclosures. On the south are the two complexes, traditionally known as Saheli Burj or the Tower of the Female Friend. The South Gate or the Siddhi Darwaza. The design of the South Gate is a vertically elongated version of that of the outer facades of the East both gates. West gates. Both its faces have a simple pishtak flanked by engaged shafts terminating in guldastas. The Great Gate, Darwazai Rosa. The Jalau Khana complex is dominated by the Great Entrance Gate set in the center of the southern wall of the funerary garden. It prepares a visitor to the grand hall of the mausoleum that awaits within. Charbagh. Large square is divided by two main walkways, Kiaban, into four quadrants. Each quadrant is in turn subdivided, narrower cross axial walkways, so that 16 sub quadrants are formed.
The four marble benches around the tank were put in 1907 to 1908 on the order of Curzon. The four main walkways are identical. The Taj is simply a majestic tribute to an exotic beauty. The saga of the Taj would be half told if the myth related to it are not mentioned. Like many a great buildings, the Taj Mahal has its myths and legends. It seems that there is more fiction on the Taj than serious scholarly research. Several of the stories belong solely to oral tradition and are told by the guides. Some are so established that they form a popular history of the monument and have made their way into the guidebooks and some have been taken up by the scholars or even created by them and thus become part of scholarly debate facts to the last category belong the oldest tales of the Taj here the most widely known is story of second Taj the black Taj which Shah Jahan intended to build in black marble opposite the present mausoleum Shah Jahan began to build his own tomb on the other side of the river but the war with his sons interrupted his plan and Aurangzeb who reigns at present is not disposed to complete it Shah Jahan was put under house arrest by his own son and successor by force Aurangzeb the latter did not agree with his father on most issue issues and was particularly opposed to him building a black taj as his own mausoleum Upon Shah Jahan's death, Aurangzeb made the body of the emperor who got the body of his beloved Mumtaz in a golden casket from Buranpur to Agra, carried in a boat by only two men and buried him in the Taj next to his wife in probably the simplest manner. Shah Jahan, the emperor who fulfilled the wishes of his beloved, could not find fulfillment of his own wish to build a black Taj to express his mourning for the beloved queen Mumtaz Mahal even after his death. That was the serenity and the purity of love. Legend has it that during the eight years long ailment and imprisonment Shah Jahan used to intensely view the Taj lying on the bed through a diamond fixed in the wall in front at a particular angle. Wow. As a tribute to a woman of exotic beauty and as a mon monument and as a monument of a love story. The Taj sparkles like a jewel in the moonlight when the semi-precious stones inlaid into the white marble on the main mausoleum catch and reflect back its glow with a better gleam. The Taj is pinkish in the morning, milky white in the evening and golden when the moon shines. These changes they saw depict the different moods of a beauty of any kind. In 1632, the fifth Mughal emperor, Shah Jahan, commenced the construction of one of the greatest monuments of all time, the Taj Mahal, built atop a 22 feet high and 313 feet square platform with corner minarets 137 feet tall and 81 feet high and 58 feet in diameter. Central inner domes are mounted by an outer shell nearly 200 feet in height, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site the mausoleum built to fulfill a promise be made to his beloved wife Mumtaz Mahal as she laid on her deathbed to erect a monument to match her beauty. As rightly said by Rabindranath Tagore, a teardrop on the cheek of time, Taj Mahal.